In Lesson 3.3, students add a soap solution to water and to hard water. And the hard water is made by dissolving Epsom salt in water. What they notice is that in water, the soap mixes in, dissolves pretty well. But in hard water, the soap creates a soap scum or a precipitate. So this lesson follows lessons 3.1 and 3.2 where students saw chemical reactions that produced a gas, here they see a chemical reaction that produces a precipitate. And after this, in lessons 3.4 and 3.5, they'll see a color change and a temperature change. So all these lessons in chapter three involve the clues of chemical change. So let's take a look. So at this point, students would have used a popsicle stick or a spoon to kind of scrape a piece of ivory soap and take those scrapings, put it in water and make a soap solution. They're going to take the soap solution and put it in water and hard water. So first they'll put the solution, the soap solution, in water. And when that is mixed around a bit it should go into solution pretty easily. It mixes in well and it dissolves. And now when they put the soap solution into hard water, which is an Epsom salt solution, they'll see that it doesn't mix in nearly as well as it did with regular water. It creates like a, a precipitate or a soap scum. After the kids do that, they pour the soap solution through a brown paper towel and allow the liquid to filter through and just leave the soap scum behind. By the next day, they'll have like a dry, powdery, white particle substance, which looks like soap, but the question is, is it different? Is soap scum different than soap? So how can we tell? So there's different ways that you could compare the soap scum to soap. The way we do it in the lesson is students take the dried soap scum precipitate from the brown paper towel and put it in a measured amount of water. And they take about the same amount of soap scrapings or particles and put that in the same amount of water. And they make two solutions. And then they're going to pour those solutions into two small empty water bottles. And then they'll cap these bottles and shake them in a similar way, as similar as possible, and look for the results. So it's obvious that soap and soap scum, even though they look similar, are very different. Soap still makes a lot of bubbles, and soap scum, for some reason, doesn't. We have an animation that tries to explain on the molecular level what soap scum is and how it's different from soap. Now here, we're dissolving Epsom salt solution into a soap solution. The students did it the other way around they poured soap solution into an Epsom salt solution. It doesn't matter. In either case, they're both being combined. You can see they make these particles that represent soap scum. Now, this may be more than you're used to showing your fifth graders, but you can talk about it in a very simplified way. That soap usually has a long molecule with a sodium ion attached to it. And in solution, the soap molecule and the sodium ion would separate. So that's in the dissolved soap. In the dissolved Epsom salt solution, Epsom salt is magnesium sulfate. So it's made up of a magnesium ion and a sulfate ion. And in solution, they would separate. So what happens when they're combined is that the magnesium ion, which has two positive charges, attracts the two soap molecules, which each have a negative charge at the end on their oxygen atom, and this ends up making a precipitate, a solid. So it just so happens that this solid soap scum precipitate doesn't bubble like regular soap. It's actually a different substance at this point. Here you can see the particles of the precipitate. And now the last part of the activity shows what happens if you mix soap scum in water versus soap in water. 
and the soap and water is much, much more sudsy. They're actually different substances at this point. For the NGSS standard 5 PS13, make observations and measurements to identify materials based on their properties, and 5 PS14, conduct an investigation to determine whether the mixing of two or more substances results in a new substance. Lesson 3.3 supports both of these standards because students see that you can identify soap versus soap scum by doing an experiment. They also see that if you mix two or more substances, you can end up with a new substance. You can end up with a soap scum precipitate. If you look at the foundation boxes, science and engineering practices, planning and carrying out investigations, students take an equal amount of soap scum and soap, put it in water, and shake those bottles and see that the results are very different, and therefore the substances are different. For disciplinary core ideas, structure and properties of matter and chemical reactions, students look at the properties of the soap and soap scum and see that they're different. And they also see that if you mix soap with hard water, in this case, magnesium sulfate solution, a precipitate is formed. And that substance has different properties than the soap. For cross-cutting concepts, cause and effect, students see that on the molecular level, the magnesium ion combining with the soap molecules creates a precipitate which acts differently than the original soap. So thanks for listening or watching, and good luck with the lesson.